this is commentary for episode 119. Do you have fear of COVID-19? So, of course, we don't need to discuss the inspiration for this topic. It's top of mind, I think, for most of the world today. Uh, why don't we just get right into it? Yeah, I, I do have to say what inspired it is I had so many people contacting me. And I said this in the podcast where people are asking me for, you know, ways to get through this. And, you know, there's two ways. And I, I talked about that. You know, if we look at it, the implications are clear with what's really happening. I mean, we do have a major problem. And the second thing that we have to look at is that we have to do something about it, but not from a panic perspective. And that's why I really, I, I shut everything down. And I said, you know what, because we were going to do things. Remember, we had asked people, asked us about sleep and all of these other things. And I said, you know what, this is really on people's minds now. So I spent the week doing that, collecting all the research and the data on this uh, COVID-19. And I decided to really, you know, do something about it. And I, I'm glad we're talking about it today because what I, what my role would be in this is to really help people help or serve, serve the community in a way that we could do what we need to do, but not panic about it or get stressed because we all know that stress is what causes a breakdown in immunity. We have to go back to the immune system. And you and I were talking before we even started recording this. And I said, wait, we have to stop because I said, you know, the implications are clear. You know, our ecosystem in their natural state always need to be balanced, harmonious and safe. And we know we have a problem because we meddle with those systems. And when we meddle with them, you know, I, I did a post this week. Uh, I just found it, you know, how France stopped using pesticides. I mean, bravo to them there's other ways to work with that but people that still want a perfect front lawn for example and are killing the microbiome and mutating by killing it they're actually allowing the harmful viruses and bacteria to mutate to take over so all of this when we look at it i'm not fundamental here but we really need to think about bringing balance back to our ecosystem and i think that that's what this is really going to help us all do because people are now paying attention to their health how they behave and uh just even with climate change, habit destruction, pandemics of any kind, we all know there's many pandemics, that function of our artificial life and the industries that support that artificial life, it's amazing what we've created here. And let me add one more thing, that emotional and mental distrust. I mean, we distrust everybody, our whole government system now, which we have to like get over and really put positive energy into those that are leading now. I'm not either way. It's not I'm for one or against one. It's better not to be for or against. Just whatever is, let be. But send positive thoughts. Everybody's doing their best. No matter how destructive they may be or instructive they may be, they're doing their best. So we really need to know that our emotional and mental unrest, let's use the word unrest, is actually changing our ecosystem also. So I always say remain calm, but relax to the core, everybody. <laughs> I mean, we really need to learn how to step back. And when we're totally centered in ourselves, we can see this happening. I mean, when I went into the supermarket yesterday, you sent me a picture, which I didn't believe, on the toilet paper. I still don't get it where the toilet paper comes in to the immune system. But I, I went to the store because I needed a box of tissues, I had no idea what I was going to confront. And then I had spoken to some of people that I know, and they were already planning this for weeks. And I'm out to lunch. I mean, I have to look at myself like I'm totally out to lunch. I didn't know we were supposed to be coming in and filling up cupboards and, you know, like the uh, apocalypse. I didn't have any idea that that's what we were supposed to be doing. So it's making me wake up in my uh, in the way I deal with life and it's making everybody else wake up on some level and you and I have been talking about it forever we've been working on our immune system and our gut microbiome for how long now over two decades and so that's really what I've been counseling people I know you sent me uh, you know a few things and the people that I'm working with now 
I'm getting them some of the supplements and the things that we've done and we've worked with over the years on helping maintain a stable microbiome. Because that's really where your 60 to 70% lymphoid tissue comes. Now, there was an interesting, and I need to get that, uh, let me get that uh, article and, you know, talk about it a little bit maybe with you, you know, unless you want to say something about our ecosystem and their, you know, because you've been talking about it forever also, and you have your own little, uh, I don't want to say little, but you have your own immune support because, you know, with children now in your life and overexposure, you have to be thinking about that too. And then I could turn and say what I found very, very useful. Maybe we can give a few tips that for people that don't want or don't, you know, really engage in getting personal consultations because you could only do so many anyway. And, uh, well, it's interesting. You know, I looked at the privilege, privilege life that I have where the convenience of going to a store whenever I feel like it and getting what I want. I got to really look at myself from a deeper transformative. uh, I'm looking at this as how can, if I were to look at this, how can I transform and be a better human being? You know, I was thinking uh, I have some neighbors that I want to go visit today and just see if they need anything. You know, it's, I think this could be a real beautiful opportunity for us to come together and those that have bought the 17 dozen eggs, which I saw yesterday, it wasn't 17, I'm exaggerating, seven dozen eggs, which will go bad before the two weeks are even up. Um, Just that, or maybe they were buying it, I doubt it, for their neighbors. The point is, it really, though, elicits, because I went in for a box of tissues, and you know what I ended up coming out with? I have to say, I came out with some generic toilet paper, (laughs) whatever was left on the shelf. And I said, well, you know, maybe I need a couple of, you know, extra things. And I went, I was going to get, you know, I grow my own gardens and things like that, but I said, maybe I should get some frozen vegetables, but I went there, there was nothing left. So I got to think about myself, wow, what am I going to do with this now? I could panic and saying, I'm not going to survive and my vegetables and all of this. And then I said, wow, let me look at myself. So if we can look at how we're reacting to this pandemic, which it is, not too lax and saying, oh, it doesn't matter. It's made up. I mean, you hear stories, oh, it's some um, warfare. It's, I mean, you're just hearing silly things. And I say silly things, but there's those that don't believe it. Then there's those that are the other extreme. But really looking at it, this is what's happening now. And that's why when I started that podcast, I said, do we have to take precautions? I would say yes. But Is it something we need to panic about? No, because the panic, and you know we've been doing this forever, the panic in that not relaxing into it, meaning letting go of the fear, that's what relax to the core means, let go of your fear. If you can't do that, you're going to create a whole cascade of biochemical responses that actually cause the immune system to weaken. And that was the purpose of this entire website, uh, website, uh, episode that, uh, podcast episode that we did. Right. So. And so, yeah, and that's learn to meditate, you know, learn, of course, wash your hands. I always wash my eyes. I wash my hands and I wash my nose. I've been doing that for 30 years, 40 years now. So I've been doing that. I've shared it with every one of my clients that I've worked with, students, my friends. That's what I do. And I have certain products that I use for that. And I work with that. I'm not going to mention it on here because everyone will go out and buy the products and there'll be none left for anyone else. I don't want to do that. I don't want to create hysteria. It's it's not about that. I can say that it all starts, the real immunity starts, real immunity starts at the beginning of the mind. I'm not talking about compromised people who have had other disease states and they're not well. That's, you know, in my Feeling Good Matters book, I say all diseases in the mind somewhere. Mind meaning our energy field has taken that on. It's again, not minimizing it. I was saying something to someone the other day that, you know, don't fear. And they go, how could you minimize it? I'm not minimizing it. I am taking precautions. I'm not sterilizing the heck out of my house so that there's no friendly bacteria. I grow plants. I used to have a dog. I wish I had one, but I don't want one right now because of the 
having to find food and things like that could be a problem. And I know you have dogs, but it's okay to have a microbiome in your house. It's okay not to be sterile. It's okay if your ecosystem. Now, you had said something I wanted to comment on. If we eat the right food, we could go on forever. We don't want this this little piece to go on forever, but maybe we'll put it in two sections. But we have our ecosystem is also compromised. I eat really good food. However, where my food is grown might not be. Remember the shikame pathway we talked about? Yes, yes. From We learned that from Zach Bush, who was fantastic in that, and his microbiome, and Mercola, who does beautiful work, and all these great people who are really trying to serve humanity, that that education on, well, if your soil doesn't have that pathway to grow, to, to work with the neurotransmitters that are found in our gut, we're going to have problems with our own health anyway. And that's where, at this point in life, we need to combine it with meditation and a spiritual life, because that will override anything. And that combined with the lack of the food source that we really need, we do have food, but the lack of the real quality that we need with a good mind and a good heart, we could transform ourselves and transcend anything that comes our way. We can transcend if we all come together as a culture, as a world globally to support each other and bring everyone together. And we even look at it, even the government is finding that now. Everyone's going to have to come to this reality. No one's our enemy. We must, we're living on this ball floating around in the world and spinning all together. We're all here together on one big playground. And we better get along because it's just not working. And our, our nature, nature is really experiencing this. So all of you out there and anybody listening all has a good, they have good hearts and good minds. Use it and send light, send that energy, send that beautiful thought to our government and to the other governments to say, hey, it's time to stop playing rough. Let's all come together and really work for the betterment of humanity. It's easy to pretend we're something. It's very difficult to be a human being with qualities that serve others, not greed, not hoarding, not, oh, this is, I got to take care of myself. No, because if your neighbor is starving and your neighbor is down, it's up to you, including myself, to pick them up by the hand and say, how may I help you? How may I serve you? And that's what I see. This is going to bring that awareness. And that's where I've been working at this for well, let's say 40 years now, 20 really intensely. And I'm feeling like, wow, now it's time. You have to do it. You either sink or swim now. And that's the message. And we could all swim together. We don't have to push somebody underwater. Let's all do it together. And with that joy and happiness and positive vibration, this virus will just, it's not going to have a harm on, it won't harm us. Because we're coming from that perspective. But we need to also take, it is a virus, it can attack the body, and we need to take those precautions too. You're not going to go jump in where someone's coughing on your face. And people also have to take a little responsibility too with the coughing. I mean, I was in, I don't usually go out, but I went and met some friends last week in a restaurant. I was shocked to see somebody serving food actually coughing in their hand. I was shocked. And I didn't say anything because I didn't want to harm the person to get fired at that point, because it was that obvious. It wasn't a little, <clears throat> it was actual coughing. And I decided not to say anything, but uh, because it had stopped, but that really concerned me that someone could be, it's not that they're bad people, they're just clueless and they're in survival mode. Right. When, well, people, are in, when people are in survival mode, it's survival. Even a little salamander or a snake when it's born it's happy for the first maybe hour, and then it gets into, I better watch it. My mother will eat me because it's survival. It's out in the world. We must recognize and act accordingly. We respond. We don't need to react because as humans, we're supposed to have that integration of animal with human. Animal, I'm not defining as less, but they're not as privileged as we are with the higher faculties of the mind. But many humans haven't even addressed their higher faculties at this point. 
you wouldn't kill another human being if you were addressing your higher faculties. So that's really where we're coming with this. And I'm glad that we're doing these commentaries. And I was thinking that maybe these next couple of weeks, if people need us out there to do something together, to bring a group together, to do maybe practicing meditation and stress reduction techniques, we'll do that. And if our audience wants that, please write in. We'll create that for you. And that's really my message. Tips for remaining calm, as you always say. Raising and relax awareness. to the core. Relax, relax to, to the core. core. Absolutely. Exactly. And they're the tips that I'd really like to bring out. And, you know, it's interesting you say that. I do understand the reason why I thought bring it out now is because people will be home. I know uh, Tom, you know, has to be home now. And because people are home, we're blessed to have an Internet. And why not share that way? Because, you know, the quarantine idea is a good idea at this point. And I, I thought about it, uh, not because I'm an epidemiologist at all or an immunologist, but the idea is I believe that it's a two-week incubation period at times. And with that, we could see where we really fall in that curve that's happening if we do that. And that's really where I think they're going for the betterment of humanity. So while people are in quarantine, quarantine meaning the 10 feet away or distancing, whatever we're talking about, that's okay. It's gonna. This is going to pass too. And just like the Spanish flu and all these other, I put st some statistics, I believe, on, uh, I don't know if I put it on the podcast, but, you know, we've had uh, like the uh, the bird virus that killed many, many people, a lot of, you know, mortality. So they're not worrying so much when I say worrying, yes, we're going to lose 3% of a population, 2 to 3%. And that is, there's, that's death. Who wants that? However, the, more, the, the infectivity rate is amazing. And, you know, what I studied from a medical perspective, you know, when your lungs get filled and there's not enough respirators, that's really a problem too. But again, we can really work together, get your microbiome up and running. And so... Uh, and, and really be aware, be aware of your own breath. And maybe we'll do another uh, episode where I'll talk about the announcements that have been made to really help people uh, work with this. And we can, uh, we can really talk about that. What is it really about the virus? And how can we work these next 14 days and help ourselves?